Hi everyone, um, sitting here thinking about things that I can show you that I do. Um, I'm vetting on my own because, uh, recording on my own because um, Dottie's decided to stay at home, which is understandable because of the coronavirus. So you're going to have to excuse my fat hands in the way as I undo that screw. Um, and I've got the foot to go and, oops, a daisy, there it goes. Um, I'll just pop it, I just want you to see it, so here it is. So it's a westerly one and it's a couching one. So um, if I go up, oh, I might not do it because it wants to zoom in. So if I come there, you can see the bottom of it, it's got like a... Um, a hole with the plastic in there and that's for for couching so today we're going to do a little bit of couching I'm going to um, uh, show you how to set up the westerly foot as well on your machine this is just a, a standard uh, state it's a gen um, start again a Janome memory craft 8900 and uh, it's my old faithful as my other machine is in my house doing some free motion quilting with me so in my studio we're going to be doing uh, some some couching today. In the bobbin, I have a blue, and in the top thread, I have a black. It's already threaded through the needle. I'm going to pop that screw through there, and I'll just try and do this without my fat hands in the way, and I'm just going to do it up lightly so it's not tight at all and you can see that moves up and down and there's a reason for that at the moment um, I'm going to set up it for my fabric um, I'll show you that in a sec I will bring it over um, bear with me while I grab that on I'll um, I'll be back in a sec okay I'm back I have my fabric which actually has a picture on it um, and I will show you that um, a bit later oh well, you'll see it better once I start sewing um, that little cough in the background is my cavalier oh honey you're right darling she's been sick lately now you can see that my foot is still loose okay and and that's fine my my foot is actually in the up position so it's in up but I'm going to drop it down and you can see that that is going to sit there just nice and loose and once I've got that ready I can then screw oh candy screw that tight are you okay sweetheart you probably should be in the house darling screw that tight um, going the wrong way oh darling I might go and pop her in the house and come back a minute once I've got that tightened. So that's still not quite tight enough. That's only like finger tight and I need it to be sitting just so you can see it's still got lots of movement. See there? So I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit more and I want it to actually move like that. So when I move the fabric underneath it's like a duck on water and it just sits there. Ditching. The shape of it it's a bit hard to see I'm just going to zoom um, in a little oops daisy sorry about that now I'm going to do my first thing which is put my needle in a down now I've made sure that my needle is in the center too so that's a very important thing and I'm going to put it in the down position and bring it up so I can grab that bobbin so now I've got the bobbin thread as well. You can see both of them there. Okay. Now I'm going to pop this behind the needle, between the foot and the needle, just in that spot there. I'm going to bring it forward. Okay. I'm going back to where I started, holding onto my thread, and needle down and needle up. I'm going to then grab that thread, I'm going to grab this thread here at the back, sorry, my hands again. This thread here I'm grabbing from behind, I'll try and get my hands out of the way for you, there you are. Lifting up the foot and pulling on that thread and you can see it pulls through the wall. So I've got to grab the right side of it so that I grab the tail, 
which is this side. Hold that side. There we go. So you'll have this nice long tail there. We can then put the foot back in the down position where we started. Grab that wool, bring it back, get the thread out of the way. Make sure you're keeping that out of the way a bit as well. And pull it through till we get to the start, just before the start. And then I'm going to put my needle in the down position. Now you can use a very small zigzag. I'm just going to use a straight stitch. Um, but yeah, a small zigzag will also be good. Um, you've just got to make sure that it clears the inside of that plastic part of the, um, the, uh, the foot. Also, I'm getting a whole heap of wool. Um, you can see it there. I'm making it nice and loose. So I'm just going to move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So there, I have it all loose. So all nice and loose. So you can see all that there is just sitting there. As I move, oops a daisy, as I move, I'm going to zoom out a fraction, sorry, wrong way. As I move, I'm going to move the wool in the direction that I'm moving. So I'm going to put on my trusty gloves because whether I'm actually quilting or piecing or whatever, I tend to put these on. They help me with grip and stops me from uh, straining my hands and my shoulders. As we know, us trusty quilters, we end up with um, sore shoulders. So placing my hand, one hand on here, and I'm going to use a stop start button, so no foot. I'm going to slow it down. I just want to see where I'm at. Now I can see there I've got like a little tail and a little mess. I'm going to trim that off in a second. But you can see how I'm starting to move the, the wool in the direction that I'm about to sew. And because I've got those lines there, I can actually do that. The other thing you want to remember too is whatever the top thread is, you're going to actually be able to see it in some cases. So just make sure it's something that you're happy that goes with the wool that you're using. Alright, so I'm going to get my scissors and trim that off. Bear with me while I unravel myself from the wool. And I'm going to trim that off. And I'm going to trim it off right down at the starting point. So you'll see, I'm going to grab all that stuff. Oops, a daisy. If I can, get my fingers around it. There we go. And trim it right off there. And you might go, oh my god, you haven't buried your threads and everything. But that's okay because when we come back, we'll actually end up stitching that into itself. So there's pretty much no chance of it coming out. Glasses are on. I can see now, nice and clear. And I'm just going to slow it down a fraction more so you can see what I'm doing. And you'll see I'm just moving in the direction the wool in the direction that I'm going so that I don't miss the wool as I stitch. Like free motion quilting you don't have to keep turning your, your piece of fabric around you can then just again I'm going to put the needle up and just reposition my wool and go to the next spot. So this can be done on any machine that has a free motion quilting um, ability. Um, you can try and use just a normal um, free motion foot but you'll find that the wool will slop around too much so it's best to have one, have a foot that's designed uh, with a little hole in it for, for couching. Okay so sometimes you get little knots and things like that but that's okay. It sort of goes in with the character of it. And we're up to there. So you can see I've done two petals and I'm going to move it to this direction. I am going to move this around a bit so you can see. Keeping that wool nice and slack. It's very slack. As soon as you pull it tight you'll miss. So don't be holding on to it. Don't be tempted to. It seems to be something that we do naturally is to want to hold on to that wool. You can see I'm not really holding it at, it at all. I'm just guiding it in a direction so that it grabs. Okay. 
if you stop and pause in one position for too long you can create a knot and that can also become hard for you to um, jump over so you do have to be careful not to stop in one position too too long um, see it getting raveled up with the needle then and again just moving it in the position I need it to go to oops a daisy a bit of a knot I'll cut that off Okay, so that there I'm not going to stress over, that little knot, you probably can hardly even see it. It's just a little knot there, but I'm not worrying about it at the moment. I'm going to come around twice, so get some nice colour in there. And we're going off to the uh, fifth petal now. So there's a little bit of stop starting with this, which is okay. There's no rush, we've got weeks and weeks to do these. So goodness only knows how long we'll be sitting here doing, making lovely cushions or bag panels or whatever we're going to be doing. Um, it's um, plenty of time to catch up on those UFOs. And you can see, because I'm using such a small piece of fabric, I haven't even got it pinned because um, there's really no point in pinning it. Um, it's only going to get in my way. So you can see, if I lift up that, you can see all the petals have now been done around once. I'm going to go and do a second run and that's where that little lump will, get, will disappear. Just loosening up some more of this. So I've got lots and lots of room and going around. Daisy, bit of a lump there. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I finish that flower, so I'm going to trim that off there. I haven't trimmed my thread. I've still got my thread attached, and I'm going to do that. And you can see there's a little bit of a jump there, so I'm going to come back. I'm going to trim that off, and I'm going to come back and um, stitch that in. And I'll also be able to now stitch in my ends, so you can see that. Um, this is where you go back over you want to just to make sure that you've caught it all um, if you've caught it all the first time around you don't really have to but it's um, sometimes nice just to check I can see see one there so I can come back now and actually stitch that in my foot's probably a little bit high and that might have been why it jumped before so I'm going to you can see there's quite a bit of a gap now because I've stitched down things so I'm just going to loosen that off and let it drop down a little and then tighten it back up. There's a bit of fluff behind it. It's been a while since I've used this old girl. Okay, so I'm just going back over. And this is where you'll see where you've missed things, which is all fine. The more you do it, the better you get at it, a bit like anything. Oops, a daisy, and off the line. Got colouring in. You can see here I've missed one as well. So we're going to come back and catch that and stitch it down. Okay. Oh, 
all the way back to the start and then do the outside. I'm going to go back the same way or the opposite way. Either way is fine, it's just comfortable for me. Just make sure you stitch over those corners. So if you didn't notice before, I've got three layers. I've got the top, the backing, and a piece of wadding so that this will be complete. I don't have to add a backing onto it. It's already there. I've missed that one too. So there you go. It is possible to miss them, even if you've been doing it for a while. There's another one I've missed. It. and just check that I've caught them and I have, I've got one more to do and then I'm done and go on to the next colour. So while you're doing this you can, if you don't want to cut off your thread all the time, you can just, um, so I'm going to go up to say uh, this bit here and I'm going to do that centre of that petal, there's actually a, a leaf there. So I'm going to do that next, um, which means I need to change my wool. And I'm using one that's sort of a little bit funky. So you can see it there. And it's got little uh, twists in it and stuff. So I'm not sure how she'll play. But um, if I can find the end of it, we'll get started on it. Um, let's try and find the end. There it is. I pop them on the floor. Well, that's a nice little bit. So... Uh, needle up because I'm already in I can just put that behind so it's behind those two things the the foot bring it forward I can do that by lifting up my foot which will give me a little bit of slack then put that down needle down needle up again and move lift up my foot and pull that thread through you can see it coming through there now I'm coming from the back end, I'm going to hold on to that, I'm going to put my foot down, you're going to have a bit of thread there which we can trim off like we did before, and I'm going to go to my start position which is here, needle down, I'll just make sure I grab that bit of wool, this is a bit thinner than the last one, um, so I just have to be a little bit careful, and off we go. doesn't really like that wool much but that's okay I just need to do that little bit there and then I need to do the outside so I'm going to trim that off I'm going to stitch that back in and go back over what I just stitched down and I might have to do it twice by the looks just to make sure just make sure I got that end in I did I'm going to come back down and I like the look of of the black and that over it, it doesn't look that bad, um, gives it a bit of character and before I actually get to the end here I'm going to pull that bit of thread out, you can see it's all connected and I'm going to trim off the thread and I'm going to trim that where I want it to finish. So I'll zoom in if you can, zoom in, there we go and you'll see that, oops a daisy, there we go. So I'm just going to trim, stitch that little bit in that I trimmed off and then I'm going to go up to here and this is where I want to start the outside of my petal is over here. So I get my little bit of wool, whatever it is, needle up, down, pull that through, lift the foot up. Pull it forward, needle down just so it's out of the way, foot up, pull that fabric forward, then you've got that out, and hold on to that bit of wool, 
if I can find the end of it, there it is. And your bit of thread, find your start point again, foot down, needle down. Okay, do a couple of stitches there. And I'm just going to make sure I grab that. There it is. Because it's a bit thinner, I just want to make sure I grab it. Um, and now we're going to stitch that in. Oops, a daisy just cut it off. Try again. Needle up, foot up. I'm going to go that through. And bring that there. And foot down, needle down. And bring that all through. And I'm going to let it overlap a little. So I'm just repeating what I do at the start. Needle down. And I'm going to go back and forth. Um, it's obviously very fragile wool, so it's um, it's not liking getting trimmed by the needle, obviously. It's sort of cracked it a little, but um, we'll just keep persevering. I might have to go around twice. So I'm just going to clean up this little back end here that I started earlier. And a little bit of a lumpy thing there. Trim that off. That's the beauty of this. You don't have to be precise because it's meant to be organic. And I love that word. So I'm going to leave that out there and I'll come back and try and stitch it down manually. All right. Okay, and there it is there, stopped. Trim it off. Okay, and I'm going to stitch that in, I'll trim that little tag off there. If you do find that you don't like the wool that it's, you know, the way the wool's working with it, you can always cut it off and start again. Okay? Alright, so I'm going to just cut off there so I can trim this off a bit and get it neat. And that will come out nicely. Little bits of fluff everywhere because of the wool. So bear with me while I trim that off. Get rid of all the bits. Now I have a leaf. Okay. See, some of it didn't quite catch, so I'm just going to go back and make sure I catch that. Sometimes you might have to do a bit of a zigzag over it if it's not going to um, catch naturally. All right. And this will always be trial and error with different types of wools or ribbons or anything like that. You just want to trial how it works. All right. So I'm okay with that. And we've got a, we've got a, um, a leaf. The next leaf I might do a different way, you know, so it just depends. Now I want to do the centre of the, the flower. I'll just try and move it where you can see it. Um, the centre of the flower, that circle. Again, I'm using a different one this time. I'm going to use thinner. Um, but it's more like a wool than the other one was. So, And it's orange. So first things first. Needle down, needle up. I might do a couple just to ensure and grab that couple of stitches there just to make sure it's going to hold on and foot down, needle down. I'm going to leave that little bit of tag there because my cutoff would have made it short and I've got some slack so just going to go around and see it's not quite catching there. I'll come back to that. And sometimes it's nice to put a little decorative bit in there, like a little bit of a swirl, depending on your quilting abilities, um, or you can just fill it in like I'm going to do. It's like a pinky orangey colour. Yep, I'm about to get a knot. There we go. Just move. 
So if I don't catch them all first time around, like I said before, we'll catch it on the next time around. It's no big deal. As long as you get the majority of it down, if you have a few little loose ones, not a biggie. You've sort of got to be patient with yourself and with your learning. It's all learning. pick up new ways of doing it that might be better than I do it. You know? Some people have things that lead up from here but I find if it's just up in front of it I miss it when I go backwards so um, you can see I've missed a big one there but I'm going to come in and colour it in. This is great for, for kids, it's a great thing to teach them. Um, it's a great one to put on and decorate their, their um, say their library bag or something like that because it's not something that every every mum is going to do so it's you know you can do names you can do all sorts of things okay so that creates a really nice textured center and when I'm finished I've had enough I just trim off the wool only and I stitch that in. Right. I didn't even know that it was there. And just go back over some of these. And like I said, you might not, I've used just a black, but you know, you might come and use a, a, a yellow thread over the top of it, which, you know, might be nice and bright too. But just for the display, uh, for the uh, video purposes, I just decided to use that. I'm going to cut off the start point that we started with before. And I'm just going to zip over there and just stitch it down, just in case. Little hairy bits down. And you're done. So I'm going to cut that thread off. And I am going to put the video recorder down. And you can see, and I'll zoom oops, a daisy out so you can see that. There's one of the flowers. Oops, a little bit of fluff on there. And that is really quite vibrant. You can see that. See how vibrant it is. And it's that's how quick it is. That's quite 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 quick to do. Um, and you've quilted at the same time. I'm not too sure what my back looks like. <laughs> it could be nasty. I oh, know that's all right. It's got a couple of little taggy bits, but I've quilted at the same time. Okay, so and it's just like free motion or art quilting. It can be a little bit hairy at times, but uh, you just come back and trim all those off. All right, so that is how you do couching. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of these others and um, and I'll show you the finished piece. So I will be back soon. Um, I might let it run and just not say anything, then you can watch.
Okay, so I'm just going to interrupt over here. I really, I'm not really happy with the way the green is, so I'm actually going to do it in the variegated, and I, all I'm going to do is go straight over the top. Um, so I'll do that right now, and I might start up here. Uh, I'm doing a double knot because I'm doing cutoffs. Um, that'll ensure that it won't pull out like that. Right, so let's do another couple. Oh, I'm going to thread it. Try threading it again. Oops, a daisy. So if if your machine ever does this and it goes, oh, I don't, I don't know if I want to just, you know, be threaded right now. Um, unthread that all together then do a, a cut off just holding the thread out and then that'll put the needle in the right position and it should fingers crossed thread the needle so it's like a default position all right so let's go yeah see it seems to be coming off and I'm not really be with it doing that all the time so I might just trim it out as much as I can and fix it up with a nice bright bright variegated one what do you reckon I reckon that's going to look better so it just shows you you make a mistake we can fix this without having to um, do any unpicking I don't really want to do unpicking I'm trying to avoid it at all costs life's too short and time's too valuable Alright, it's a bit fluffy now. Let's start up here so I can put the needle down and do two knots and see if that works now. That behind, bring it forward, needle down, needle up, foot up. Let's see if it brings it through. It does nicely for me. Um, start position and needle in down position and let's go I'm going to trim this off and I'll come back to that in a minute Now I can go back over that little messy bit that I had, even though my leaves aren't green, they'll still be funky. Yeah. I like that much better. Um, and I'm going to needle up and trim that off. I'm going to stitch that in. Off you go. And I'm just going to follow it around again. So there we are, we have the leaf in there now. And Oops, a daisy, wrong button. So we made it a cut off.
Okay, you're wondering why I've stopped? Bobbin's just ran out. So I'll just grab that thread so I don't lose it. Um, I'm just going to grab the nearest bobbin. It's got white on it though, so you're going to see it probably, but like I say, for the uh, demo, it's perfectly fine. For yours, you might want to make sure you've got the same thread as what you had before.